Look at this beauty, Yucca Rostrata. This came in the mail just like a day ago and I did an unboxing, but I did it in the wrong frame rate. So I'm gonna put that up here on the screen real quick, but it might be a little bit fuzzy, I'm not sure. But the, it was packaged very, very, very well. Came out of the packaging, pretty much no problem. Lots of plastic on there. And what I ended up having to do is I poked some holes in the plastic around the root ball just because it was kind of late at night. I wasn't like ready to get it potted up. So here we are now today. Time to go ahead and pot this up. I went by one of my local nurseries and picked up this awesome pot and that'll all be in the vlog that's coming up after this. It might seem just a smidge too small, but I think it'll work fine. I'm gonna talk more about the Restrata and some other things I'm doing here, but I wanna go ahead and get it potted up first so there's something a little bit nicer to look at other than the driveway and this horrible lighting. Where'd the clouds go? I had great lighting a minute ago. First thing I gotta do here though is drill a hole in the bottom. This pot does look like it's made out of cement, but it's actually a lightweight pot, so I probably don't even need to be using a diamond bit for this. But the diamond bit's going to give me the smoothest cut, so I'm not going to risk breaking the pot. There we go. So just kind of tilted that around a little bit, made sure the water, even though you couldn't see it, didn't have a tripod, I made sure that there was a continuous stream of water spraying on there the entire time. Really easy. And I'm also going to go ahead and toss some of the screening in here. It's made out of vinyl. It won't rust or anything, but these holes are really big, so I want to make sure that soil and stuff doesn't wash through them. Now it's time to go ahead and blend up the soil mix. And I'm sorry that things are not more attractive and pretty right now. Never thought that I'd be upset that the sun's out. Yeah, saying upset is a little bit dramatic, but harsh lighting is not the best for filming. Since it's not in a pot, it's bare root, I need to get pot up now and I wanted to do a video on it and wanted to talk about it. So we're just gonna go with it. So what I have going on over here is just a Rubbermaid tub. I have a whole bunch of all-purpose cactus mix in here. You see, it's a fairly decent blend, but it holds together a little bit more than I would prefer for a yucca. So I'm going to go ahead and add some perlite into this. Pretty hefty amount of perlite actually. And then just like a handful of Espoma Biotone. This is the starter blend. It helps get good stuff going on down in the soil to help get the plants rooted and taking off. That's the idea here. I want to create a nice soil blend that drains very, very, very well. I don't want this to stay wet for a long time when it's been watered because then, you know, can have issues with rot and things like that. And I had thought about adding some more sand into this, but this actually, it's already a pretty sandy mixture, so this should be fine. And just to be safe, I'm adding a little bit of lava rock to the bottom of the pot also. It doesn't have to be lava, but that's just, that's what I had laying around. Get a little bit of a base layer of soil down into this. Now I've gone ahead, you <laughs> like the, I have this on top of the tumpster. Well, you, you know, sometimes you just kind of got to go with the flow, right? So this looks like it's a pretty good healthy root system in here. The soil is kind of a clay. There's a little bit of a clay texture to it, but it's also incredibly sandy. What I'm doing here is I'm kind of looking around to see if there's any big chunks that I need to remove because that clay is going to retain an awful lot of moisture and where this came from, that's okay. Cause this came from a place that doesn't have really harsh winter, but up here in the North, that's not going to work, especially in a pot. You don't want clay in a pot. I know that this looks like clay right here, but this is actually, this is the root. This is the stump with all the roots coming out of it. So I don't think, I'm not seeing anything major in there that I'm going to need to remove. Oh, hi, Shadow. And this was field dug. So you can see where the roots have been chopped and it's okay, it'll regenerate, but that's just one of the reasons that I want it potted up. I don't want this in the ground this year, just because I think that that's gonna be too much to get it rooted and then to have it be able to survive the winter. I think potting it up is usually gonna work better with yuccas that have been field dug. And I know that might seem a little bit backwards because normally putting a plant in the ground is gonna get it to take off and root better. But the issue is more that it's going to need to survive the first winter. And I don't think that it's that's it's going to be ready for that this year. So I also, while I'm here, need to look at where the soil line was on this guy. It's a little bit hard to tell. Actually, I mean, I know for sure I don't want the soil up here. That's not going to be good. But uh, I don't know. I'm not certain, but I'm thinking somewhere right around here is probably where that soil line is going to need to be. And I say that because up here you can see these are the highest points of the roots, so probably like just above that. I don't want to go too deep with it because that can like basically kill the plant. Yeah, I think right around there. Now I'm also, before I actually fill this up the rest of the way with soil, I'm trying to go through and use my fingers, which are not in focus, there we go and trying to kind of work some of the soil up in there so that there aren't like major, major air pockets that are gonna be a lot harder to fill. A lot harder to fill once this is full of soil. So I'm just sort of leaning it and tilting it and moving the soil up a little bit higher around the center. All right, I think that's good. What do you think? Get the rest of that sticker off in there. So I'm not gonna have the soil filled all the way to the very, very top, especially with something like this with a really airy mixture. If you water really heavily or there's like a heavy downpour, 
The soil can come bubbling up and go everywhere. It really shouldn't once things are set up the way they should be. There we go. And then I do actually have some gravel I'm going to top dress this with. But first, I want to go ahead and water it in. That way the soil can kind of settle and go where it needs to go in case I need to add any more. I want to do that before I top dress it. There we go. Finally finished that up. It's looking pretty good too. It has a very nice, clean, and simple look to it. And because there's a wall behind me, this is as far away as I could get to get the full thing in frame. That's all right. It'll do. Even with the lighting and the shot and whatnot, that's okay. Let's talk about the Rostrata. Yucca Rostrata, also known as the Beaked Yucca. I think I've also heard it called the Big Bend Yucca. If you know some other names, comment that down below. But what this Yucca is most known for is its beautiful, beautiful bluish to gray foliage, and it is one of, if not probably the hardiest of the trunked yuccas. In locations that have really nice dry winters, this can go down to probably zone five. That's 20 degrees below zero. That's very, very, very cold. Now here where I live in St. Louis, they, I've seen them grown outside. The botanicals has some grown outside. Uh, there are a couple of houses in the area where I have seen these, but it's not common. It's pretty rare. It's right on the border of 6A, 6B. The reason it's not common is because we have fairly wet winters. So the more dry the winter time, the more hardy this will be. I'll talk about that a little bit more towards the end. But just as far as the overall plant goes, these can get up to 12 feet tall. I've heard some say taller than that. They're a really slow grower. I think it takes about 10 years to get around four feet of trunk off of one of these guys. Hence why they're a little bit pricey. Typically, it's just an upright single trunked plant. However, I have read some things that suggest that if these have more of an alkaline soil, then they'll be a little bit more likely to branch with age. I don't know how much validity there is behind that, but it does make some sense. This is a yucca that prefers a more alkaline soil. So that's really the case with a lot of yuccas. A lot of yuccas prefer a more alkaline soil over an acidic soil. Specifically the desert type yuccas. This yucca you can be found in parts of southern Texas and then parts of, I guess, what would be northeastern Mexico. Places that are very dry and very, very warm. However, it still have some really cool nighttime temperatures and cool winters, but it's dry. Making it a desert type yucca. You know, a tropical yucca, they can take a more acidic soil and obviously they don't need as perfect drainage in their pots. That's not going to be the case with the Restrata though. This Restrata, I did water it in, which I was a little bit hesitant about doing. I thought about maybe moistening the soil and just filling it in around with moist soil, but I really want to make sure there weren't any air pockets underneath. You saw that that root ball just a little while ago and it looked like it had some like kind of nooks and crannies and it's not great to have air pockets in with the plant when you repot them. It ends up creating sort of a dead zone, a place where bacteria will grow and there's low oxygen. It's just not great. So I went ahead and I watered it in I'm, and I wanted to make sure that soil was draining well also. Just to be safe, I will be incorporating a moisture meter with this guy because it's going to be very important that I do not water this when that soil's moist. In fact, I'll probably be allowing the soil to dry out for several days, perhaps even weeks at a time. All right, that was a fun visual and all, but it's not very pretty. It's because this plant was field dug that I will be watering it a little bit more often than I would be if this were in the ground. That's because it just, it needs to get off with rooting. But like I said, I'll water it and let that soil dry completely before watering it again. I did notice one issue with this pot here and it's that it is completely flat so I'm going to need to rig something up under there to lift that up. That way water can drain out properly from the bottom. Overall I just want to make sure there's really good airflow around the plant. That way I don't have to worry about rot or anything happening in there. Like most other yuccas this one will bloom in the springtime. Sends out a very long pendulous flower or semi-pendulous really. It, they have white flowers on them and I think that the name is derivative from those flowers or from the seed heads. Rostrata is like a bird's beak. Um, you may have heard of that with like the Heliconia rostrata, a very classic tropical flower which comes out to a point. Rostrata is that, that beak. Sometimes when looking at the yucca rostratas online you may see places calling it a plant that's synonymous with yucca brigata. It's not the same plant. Its leaves are much 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 more stiff like they'll cut you. Whereas on the rostrata they still have a point to them but they're not like gonna pierce right through your hand or anything. They have a very tight canopy. Those leaves are really really close together and that's one of the things I think that makes it so pretty. Overall the structure of this plant is just beautiful and this is small but it was a fantastic price for how big it is 
really a fantastic price for a Yucca Restrada, period. That's not a ceiling. Oh, and I'll link that, the eBay thing down below. I, whenever you watch the video, I can't say whether or not it's still going to be active or whatnot, but, but I'll have the seller link down in the description. Do plan on putting this in the ground eventually, not this year. I want to go ahead, like I think I mentioned before, I want to get it rooted into that pot. I want it to have roots when I put it in the ground because the winters here might be a little bit troublesome for the plant. At least for its very first winter. It can be a little bit shocking to take a plant that's never experienced a harsh, harsh winter and just throw it outside. When I do move it outside for its first winter, it'll be in the ground and I will likely be covering it to protect it from moisture. Or at the very least, I will be tying the top of the plant, the canopy, pulling it up together and tying that tight so moisture can't get down into it. If they were a more common, easy to find plant, I'd go ahead and give it a shot. It's just not a risk I wanna take right now. And I think it looks pretty good in that pot too. I don't hate how that looks. I think it looks nice. Now, obviously the surroundings are a bit chaotic We're inside in my little grow room right now. But once this is outdoors, I'm really gonna like that. I mean, I like it now, you know what I mean. And this is a yucca that holds on to its dead leaves. They went ahead and cut them off probably for shipping. Like I have another one over here where its old foliage is starting to unfurl. It's starting to brown off and that'll hang on. It'll hold on to that for a really, really long time. And then eventually it will brown off just like you see here and give way to a smoother trunk that's underneath. That takes a pretty long time. I don't see myself going in and removing them. I think that would just be stressful to the plant, would open up some wounds. It doesn't need that right now. It's trying to get rooted. And having the old parts of the leaves on the trunk is actually pretty common. It's a normal thing with these guys. All right, that's it. There really isn't that much more to say. It's a very hardy yucca. They get a nice big trunk on them, pretty blue color, keep them dry during the winter time, and alkaline soils better. Chances are in the springtime right now, it's early March. Once it's actually outdoors in the spring, I'll put a little bit of fertilizer in this pot, not just the Espoma Biotone, the starter. It would probably benefit from a fertilizer that has some calcium in it. I talk about that a lot with cactus and succulents. Calcium is great for building really strong roots and cell walls. I'll probably just give it a small dose of that monthly with some seaweed fertilizer. That's only going to be during the active growing season. I'm not going to be placing this plant anywhere where the irrigation can hit it because it'll get too wet. And then I'm also likewise with that irrigation going to make sure that I don't have this place somewhere that the water is going to be getting into the crown of that plant. Sometimes we have spells around here where it'll rain for days and days and days on end and then we'll have like a drought for a month and a half. But it's those days and days and days on end where things are more risky and I don't want water settling in that crown so I may have to move it to a more sheltered place if it gets to that point. And that's because this is a new plant. It's a plant that's rooting out. It's not fully developed. It's not doing its thing. It's plant immunity isn't really up to par yet. By immunity, I really just mean the strength of the plant. It's focused right now on growing roots, not trying to fight off pests or diseases and whatnot. So yeah, moral of that story, dryer is better. I've wanted one of these since I was a child. I've always been into growing plants that have a really tropical vibe to them, even though I don't live someplace that's tropical. And this has been a plant where I knew that if I could get one and put it outside, it would likely do okay during the winter times, even though we have harsh winters. They're fairly easy to protect. It's not like a windmill palm where you have to sometimes wrap them up with lights and tons of frost cloth and mulch and just like really, really be on top of it. With these, you just need to keep them dry. So I would still probably put some sticks around it and a frost cloth. I'd use the sticks so that the weight isn't on top of that canopy because snow or something might settle on there. I wouldn't want that weighing it down. Now, if temperatures were to drop below zero, even though it's rated commonly to zone five, which is 20 degrees below zero, I still think below zero, at least for the first several years I would have this, I would probably do something a little bit extra protective, like throw some lights around it just to be safe because there's just, there's not a lot of leeway and forgiveness with slow growing plants. Something were to go wrong and were to lose that crown, it would take a long time for this to recover and it could recover, not necessarily from the crown, though it could from the crown, but from the sides could end up branching out or from the roots. That's why I need to get those roots developed before it goes into the ground. Right now, it just kind of looks like a pole with some leaves on it, but eventually this foliage right here will start to come down and down and down and it'll drape down as it ages and it'll have like a nice spherical shape to it, which is really pretty. This is what I would consider to be one of my bucket list plants. There's just something so cool about the Rostratas. There are a lot of trunked yuccas out there, but there's something about the Rostrata. It just, I think it's partially, I like the girthy trunk, 
the blue foliage, the texture of these trunks as they hold on to their old leaves. It just looks a little bit more tidy, I think is part of what it is compared to a lot of other trunked yuccas. They don't quite have the wild, crazy appearance to them. Okay, that's gonna do it. Hey, why don't you guys comment down below? Let me know some of the fun things you've been doing with yuccas. Have you seen these rostratas grow around your areas? Do you have them? Let me know. You can also hit me up on Instagram. I have all my social media linked down below. Follow me, I'll follow you back. Don't forget to that like button. Makes a big difference for the videos and for the channel, so thank you. And hit that subscribe button and notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. And I'll have more going on with this plant in this weekend's vlog. Mostly just me out shopping, trying to find the pot, getting distracted, buying clothes. It's because, you know, vlog life. I hope everybody out there is doing well, having a great day, great life. Everything's just going fantastic for you. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.